morning friends this is the next lecture from the sterilization series in the previous video we talked about the dry heat sterilization it is the next method of the sterilization and in this video we are going to talk about the most important topic of the sterilization that is the moist heat sterilization and why it is the most important one because it is used commonly if you see the bed sheets in the hospitals or any other dressing materials they get sterilized by the see uh, moist heat or what we can see uh, say that is generally autoclave so dressing is the main important thing which is get sterilized by the moist heat sterilization so let us start with the moist heat sterilization first of all we have to know the mechanism of action because many of the time in the questions in the gpad niper and the icmr is about the mechanism of action so mechanism of action is simple in the overall video the first video i talk about the journal classification as their mechanism of action so denaturation and the coagulation of the protein denaturation and the coagulation coagulation means when something just associate at a place and make a complex thing just the co coagulate thing just like the coagulation of the blood you see that when uh, bleeding occur there after 2 to 8 minutes the clotting is occur the coagulation is occur So simply is the coagulation of the protein. Why this is happen? Because the proteins are not stable at that temperature and the steam in this the moist heat. Why we using the term moist? It is due to the using of steam. Using of steam and steam has a very deep penetrations. That's why they denaturate the protein or coagulate the protein. so one more question is asked why we use uh, steam the answer is simply one because steam can penetrate deeply that is the simple reason why we are using steam one more diplomatic questions can be asked the question is uh, when we add acid or alkali to the steam what happen or generally if you do it in the in your labs or in the experiment during the b form or the f form when you add acid or alkali in the steam the steam get more effective more effectively it's going to denaturate the protein or the coagulation of the protein so when you add acid or alkali means to the steam why we use the term alkali here not why we don't use the term base there is a difference between the base and the alkali if the something having the basic ph and that is that and the compound is soluble in water then we use the term alkali we don't use the term base base means it is insoluble so we use the term here alkali acid and alkali that is the reason in the use of the term sometimes basic and sometimes the alkali alkali is generally generally mean the solubility in the water so that's the reason so pasteurization denaturation and the coagulation of the protein so first we talk about the pasteurization there are three main uh, methods or techniques they used in the moist heat sterilization pasteurization tindalization and the autoclave you can also take as a uh, pressure cooker is as a simplest examples of the moist heat sterilization so pasteurization is the technique given by the louis pasteur why he invented the technique as we know that the invention is the mother of any of the discovery so louis pasteur gives this technique or invent this technique do for the uh, wines mainly for the wines louis pasteur invent this technique or use this technique it is used for generally the heat labile fluids you have to note that i think there are fluids heat labile fluids so heat labile fluids you are getting in the half liter of polythenes or the pasteurized milk in the various confectionery shop or the mother mother dairy plants amuse plant they are the pasteurized milk how they pasteurize now the question is there are two methods also in the pasteurization technique that's why we say that or when you uh, buy an uh, pack of any of liters of the uh, milk you always see that a thing written pasteurized milk you can see that easily so two methods first is the batch method or it is also known as the holding method 
Holding means you have to hold the thing. So in this there is a 63 degree Celsius temperature for 20 minutes. 63 degree Celsius for 20 minutes in the batch method you have you have to hold the uh, fluid for the 20 minute at least for the 63 degree Celsius. This method is not used too much. The commonly used method is the flash method. One more advantage of the flash method because we have to produce the product in a very large quantity or in the bulk that we why that's why we using the flash method. In this there is only 20 seconds where in this there is 20 minutes. The temperature is increased that why the term flash is used. As you uh, use your uh, mobile phone for taking the uh, photo, uh, photograph you take that and the flash is come and just go away. So that's why the flash, met, uh, flash method is for the 20 seconds and for 72 degrees Celsius. And 72 degrees Celsius for 20 seconds where in this is a 63 degrees Celsius for 20 minutes. You have to note a point is the 20 minutes. In this, there is not only just about the heating and the flash method, it is also the cooling. What's about this? You give it and the flash method put the uh, fluid material for 72 degrees Celsius for the 20 seconds. Then there is leads to the cooling. Cooling, rapid cooling is occurred to the 13 degrees Celsius. Why we are going it just to the 30 degrees Celsius, not to the 0 degrees Celsius? Because when you do it for to the zero degree Celsius, the fluid may get deteriorated or its chemical nature gets changed. That's why we are using till only the 13 degree Celsius. Next, we come to the technique tindalization. You just uh, generally he, uh, hear about the tindal effect, but now in this we are going to heard about the tindalization. It is the technique that is most uh, applicant in preventing the spore formation. In this day, the sterilization takes three days, consecutively three, three, uh, three days. You can't miss even a single day. So you have to uh, do the sterilization of the same process for the three consecutive days. What is the process? That 100 degrees Celsius for 10 to 30 minutes. 100 degrees Celsius for 10 to 30 minutes. And you have to do this thing for the consecutive three days, you cannot miss a single day. Now the question is arising, why we are doing it for the three days? Because if the first day you done, there is a, the vegetative propagation or the bacteria will die. But there is, uh, there may be the spore that may be present or bacteria may form the spore after the sterilization. So for the spore prevention or killing the spores, this technique is used. That is the tendalization. 100 degree Celsius for 10 to 30 minutes. Application of this is important to kill the spores. This method is also known as the uh, by the two names also intermittent sterilization or the fractional sterilization. Fractional or intermittent, why we are using these words? Because we are taking the three consecutive days. We are not doing in the 20 seconds or the 30 minutes. We are doing it in the three consecutive day 700 degrees Celsius for 10 to 30 minutes. So this is the second method is our uh, tenderization. First we have to do the pasteurization by the Lewis pasture. Next come to the laboratory instrument what we use is the autoclave. You can take it in a simple example by taking the pressure cooker. It is a steam under pressure. If you see the pressure cooker in the in the kitchen what is there? There is a steam under pressure. Steam is come and steam penetration is more, more deeply. So it can be vertical or horizontal. In the industry, both are used, vertical and horizontal. The per, uh, behind the using of the vertical and horizontal is the desire or the purpose. What purpose is the main, the main purpose behind the using the horizontal or the vertical is the quantity of the material we want to sterilize. If the quantity is more, we use generally horizontal. If the quantity is less, we use vertical. This can vary. So vertical and horizontal. Now there is a uh, microorganism named Bacillus stereothermophilus. It is the indicator that is used to check the, or we can say the validation of the autoclave. Bacillus 
Stereo thermophilus is used. It is the microorganism names. In the previous video, you say there is the bacillus subtilis that is used for the dry heat sterilization as an indicator. But in this is the bacillus stereothermophilus. Sometimes, uh, besides this, the uh, Clostridium species also used uh, for the validation of the dry heat sterilization. Clostridium species are also used sometimes instead of this. Now there is a wide variety of the temperatures that we can use in the autoclave. But the common one is the 121 degrees to 124. In the options, you get 121 degree for 15 minutes. And steam pressure is the important one. Its unit is important. That is the LB square inch. LB is pound. It is uh, written as LB, LB square inch. It is the steam pressure at 15 lb per square inch pressure for 15 degree celsius and at 121 degree celsius is a 15 minutes or and at the 121 degree celsius this is the most common one this is asked exactly directly this is asked and it is just written in the option in the similar manner first the temperature second the holding time and third is the steam pressure so if we vary the temperature what will happen if we are decreasing the temperature, the time starts increasing. So 115, uh, 115 to 118 degree, the times get increased or doubled. We can say that it is 30 minutes and pressure also decreases. So it is 10 minutes. When temperature is more, steam is more, pressure is more. Directly pressure is more. 126 to 129. 10 minutes time decreases, pressure increases is a 20 lb per square inch 135 to 138 it is just three minutes and 30 lb per square inch is the pressure uh, i request you to note down this table because this is the most important table in the autoclave and the variable temperature is generally asked in the gpad niper or the icmr examination so this is the important one in the next we use the the autoclave used for and the not used for First, we come to the not used for. If you see the previous video of the dry heat, in this uh, in the previous video, you see that uh, this section at this place, all these limitations of this is get covered by the dry heat sterilization. So powders cannot be sterilized because generally some common sense one is used for in the not used for. But students get confused at the time of the examination. That's why I mentioned in this video. We cannot sterilize powder because steam is cover, uh, coming, so it can make the reactions with the chemicals or the pharmaceutical products. Oils, fats, ointment, oil and fats, in generally the immersion can also become in this. Immersion can also cannot be sterilized by this. The oil, fats and ointment because they can cause rancidity too also. Next is used for. In the starting of video, I talk about the surgical dressing. Rubber products, mainly the droppers and the other rubber containing insulators in the laboratory, they can be also sterilized by the steam heat. One more thing is the glassware. In the metals are also included. Some metal uh, equipments, just like forks and scissors, are also included in this. Saline solution, bacterial media, filter, and fuse, these are the most important ones, and all of these are important. Surgical dressing is the important one, but your saline solution is important, bacterial media is important, and fuels are important. Rubber products, you can generally uh, have the common type of the using the rubber product in the moisture sterilization. So, use for and not use for is generally depends on your common sense. But I am mentioning it that you don't confuse in the examination. Bacterial media, saline solution, rubber uh, pr product, surgical dressing, filtrations, ampules. Generally, the plastic bottles also can be sterilized. They are in the good quality of the plastics and glasswares. One more thing I want to include that is we can use the volatile oil. It depends on the nature of the volatile oil and the temperature of the volatile oil at which temperature it gets evaporated. So we cannot say clearly about the volatile oil that is comes in the this section or the this section. 
So there is a confusion on the volatile oil because the volatile oil generally evaporate as the normal room temperature. So this is the video about the moist sterilization. I hope you like the video. In the next video, we are going to talk about the radiation type of sterilization, ionizing and UV. For the next video, stay tuned and have a good day and all the best for your examination. Thank you so much.